The next person I want to discuss is Miss Zephyr Wright. Um, I'm really excited to talk about her because I think that she is a great figure in terms of really being able to personify this idea of how the black community being involved with food were able to have access to different resources that maybe wouldn't have been readily available to them and how this access was also able to impart real tangible change. Now, Miss Wright was actually the personal cook to Linda B. Johnson, who later on became the president. Now, it's believed that through her intimate relationship with him, um, you know, she's cooking food. Let's just go back to there. Food. Food is, I think, one of the most basic concepts that we know and love. We need it for our nourishment. We enjoy it when it tastes good. It evokes emotion. It can bring a comfort. It reminds us of home. It's food. That being said, people that touch your food, you would think or have, you know, a little bit of an intimate relationship with you. I'm a mom. I cook for my kids and my husband every day. And bringing that food to the table, I get access to their little hearts and souls each and every day in a special way. And I think that anyone that's sat down after a long day and is just starving can attest that vulnerability that you have when you're sitting and you're eating food. Um, that's the reason why I've always taken my role in hospitality and food in general to be very seriously. I found that I'm being included in a part of your day of vulnerability. You're tired, you're hungry, you need nourishment, um, and you're trusting me to be a part of that experience each and every time you bring me into your kitchen. So that does not go lost on me. That being said, I think that having that access to someone's heart and to someone's soul, um, in this case, gave access to power. Now, it's been witnessed on many, many accounts that uh, Miss Wright was able to have very intimate and personal conversations with Mr. Johnson um, and was able to explicate the discrimination that both her and her husband re received on a daily basis. And so it's believed that by giving these first-hand accounts to her experiences of discrimination in America, that it was able to give a real voice to the experiences of the Black community in America at that time. And it's argued that as she recounted these instances of discrimination, that her words influenced President Johnson into signing the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And... Whether it was that one thing she said or a combination of things that were said or the things that she said coupled with the human attributes she brought just by having conversations. She wasn't just a slave. She wasn't just a cook. She became a person. She had a voice. Her words were included. Um, this contribution may well change the world as we know it in whatever way that the civil rights Act did. You know, I'm not saying that by any means everything's gone and everything's just great and look, Linda B. Johnson heard it and everything's fine. Um, but what it did do is it brought her voice out. It made the Black experience real to someone who was in a position of power to do something about it. And so witnesses, again, this is all witness account that she had these conversations that he was deeply impacted by the conversation and um, it goes on so much to say that once he signed the actual act uh, the civil rights act of 1964 which is believed that she really pushed him um, in her personal accounts of discrimination to sign that he actually gave her the pen that he signed that act with as a token of his appreciation for making him realize what was going on and so thank you miss Wright. thank you not only for making some damn good food which arguably brought a lot of power to Johnson's household but also that you used this opportunity to have a real conversation that imparted real change and there are millions and millions of people that are here to thank you for that.